Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why does the blower motor not shut off? It just continues to run all the time, and you don't know why. So I'm going to give you the top four reasons uh, why that may be occurring. So what I did it right here is this is one of the reasons. It could be a safety sensor that's a problem. So I pulled this out. This actually goes back here, and it goes into the heat exchanger area, and it's the high heat temperature sensor, otherwise known as the high heat plenum switch. All right, so it could look like this. It could also look something like this. Uh, so this right here is also wired in series from the control board to also the flame rollout switch. Now here's a close-up image of the flame rollout switch. It has a button, so you have to reset it manually. If this is twitch tripped, that is actually a big deal. Uh, that could be something with either the gas pressure here or more likely it has to do with the heat exchanger, either that it's clogged or that it's cracked. So you need to look into that. You don't want to just press this button and walk away. All right, so there's probably a reason why this is tripping. If this, if this switch is open, then it means that the furnace is overheated. And if that's the case, then either the gas is too high or the airflow is too low, or maybe just that this sensor is going bad. All right, so you got to uh, check those adjustments. Also, what could be wired in series with the high heat plenum switch and also the flame rollout switch here, you could also have a low pressure gas switch if you have propane. So this would be mounted right here, either right here or possibly into the side of this gas valve. So these are basically the same. Uh, these are just two different uh, models or versions, uh, but this, you'd have these wires right here attached. So any one of these three items, uh, if they were to open up the electrical circuit, uh, then, then the blower motor would likely just continue to run. This means that you have low gas pressure coming in, like as if the propane tank is empty. Now here's a quick example of safety wiring. Okay, so you have your plug right here, your hot wire comes out, goes through this flame rollout switch right here. When the power is off right now. Then it goes through the low pressure gas switch. Then it goes through the high heat plenum uh, switch right here. So this is the high heat temperature sensor. And then it goes back through into this plug again right here. So here's an example. I'm now going to turn the power on. I want to show you what happens. So because we have no pressure right here, no gas pressure, we're shooting an error code. So this error code happens to be 33, meaning uh, limit switch tripping. That is three short flashes and then three long flashes. And this is a carrier control board. So if we were to check the voltage, we would put one probe on common and one on the 24 volt wire where it comes out at and we read 27 volts. Now if we leave the one probe on common and put the other probe in the other hot, you notice that we don't have any voltage. So if you have say two or three volts or whatever, that actually means that you do not have your 27 volts. So something, one of these three is tripped and we know it to be the low pressure uh, gas switch right here. Let me show you what happens when I jump this out temporarily and turn the power off and then turn it back on again. Now this time you see we have a status light that is just solid and that means that there is no problem right now. So we're reading 27 volts there and let's check the the other wire and that's 27 volts. That means it's making it through all three safety sensors. And then we would need to check to see why we have low gas pressure. Maybe the tank is empty, but we, we definitely do not want to leave anything jumped out. Issue number two could be if you have an older furnace with a fan limit control, such as this right here, you actually have three settings on this fan limit control. And uh, this rod right here sticks into the heat exchanger and it has bimetal. And the bimetal, as it heats, it twists. So there's three settings right here, one, two, and three. The third one is the uh, high temperature limit switch, and basically it breaks the power. The second switch right here is when the blower motor is supposed to turn on, and it's powered from over here. And we usually set that second switch at about 120, and then you have the first switch. That's when the blower motor shuts off at. We typically set that at 90 degrees or 85 degrees. So when your your furnace is heating up, it's going to turn this dial right here uh, and it's going to turn the blower motor on at say at 120. 
So when the ignition system is heating up the heat exchanger, the blower motor won't turn on until, say, 120 degrees. Then uh, when the thermostat is satisfied and the ignition system uh, kicks off, the blower motor is still going to cool down the heat exchanger and it shouldn't shut off until 85 or 90 degrees. What could be happening here is maybe you have this first dial set down too low. It's too close to the actual temperature that it is in the building and therefore it just won't shut off. Another thing could be is if you have it set at 85 or 90 degrees, maybe this bimetal is just worn. All right, and uh, this is no longer in calibration, and so that would be a problem. Temporarily, you could try to turn this first dial up a little bit, uh, but uh, I would say go ahead and replace your fan limit control. So that's number two. That's the second problem. Another issue could be that you're accidentally sending a fan signal from your thermostat or your thermostat wiring, and the way to determine that is by taking a reading on the G in common. So if you're getting a 27 volts right now, as if your thermostat is calling for fan, then that would mean that either your thermostat or your thermostat wiring is bad. So right now we are calling for fan because we have uh, R sends 24 volts to the thermostat and it connects to G and then G comes back and sends a signal to the board telling it to actually turn the fan on. Uh, so if you're getting this 27 volts, while your thermostat is not calling, then one of those two things are the problem. A way to determine what the problem could be is you turn the power off, then you pull this faceplate off, and then you turn it on again and see if you have 27 volts here again. Uh, if the problem goes away when you remove the faceplate, then that tells you that it's definitely the thermostat. If it's the wiring, you could have a, a red and green wire actually touching on its way to the thermostat, or it's actually touching right behind the thermostat face. The fourth reason could be that your relay actually on the board is actually melted together. Okay, so if you do not have 24 volts from G to common, if you don't have that, but you're still sending, say, 120 volts to your blower motor, if it's a PSE blower motor, uh, then you know that you have a problem with this relay on the board. So these are all relays right here. And to give you an image of what one looks like, it just looks like something like that. And if you happen to be able to see in there and see that that's burnt, uh, these connections could be burnt together, and that's actually what's happening. Anytime you have power to this board, it just sends power directly over to the fan motor. Also realize that if you have, say, an X13 motor or a variable speed motor, that you're always sending high voltage to it at all times, and then you're sending either 24 volts or... DC millivolt signals over to it in order for it to turn on. But regardless of that, there may be something wrong with your control board and that's sending the signal to the blower motor telling it that it needs to turn the blower motor on. So the long and short of it is that if, you're, if your limits are good and you're, you're getting your 24 volts back and you're not calling for fan to turn on by the G terminal in common, then your control board is likely the culprit. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash jcservicetech, where we're rewarding the members there by adding articles, videos, and answering questions. And if you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, such as the DL479 or DL469 multimeter, alligator clips, or wire strippers and cutters, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.